Am I the curious? I am the curious. <laughs> These stories that happen here are literally surreal. At least they think so, right? So, my friend, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's get to today's story. I recorded my wife cheating on me, and I can't stop watching it. A couple of weeks ago, I decided I wanted to surprise my wife with a kid-free night out. My parents live about an hour and a half away from us, and I arranged for the kids to stay with them for the weekend. Usually when I go to my parents, I am gone until later in the evening. We spend all day there and leave around dinner time. This time, I was dropping the kids off and immediately going home so I could surprise my wife and we could go out as soon as possible. I had ma made reservation at a nice restaurant and was hoping to go to a few places for some drinks first. I left at 8.30 and was back in our housing plan before 12.30. As I pulled onto my street, I saw a truck parked in front of my house. I did not recognize it. I assumed it was someone seeing the neighbors, though, because it's not that unusual for someone to park in front of our house. I parked a few houses away, thinking I would sneak into the house and surprise my wife instead of pulling in the driveway and going into the garage. I went in through a basement door. I was as quiet as possible, but as soon as I walked in, I heard her making sounds from the floor above. When I first heard it, I thought she was just by herself, maybe having some personal time, you know? I didn't want to interrupt her privacy and embarrass her, so I was going to go back to my car and just go in the garage so she'd know I was home. Then I heard a man's voice. I immediately felt sick. My heart felt like it was going to explode out of my chest. It is hard to describe how I felt in this moment. I decided to go upstairs. I had no desire to confront them. I just wanted to see what was going on. I moved slowly and quietly and went up the stairs. The door was halfway open. The kitchen was empty, but I could tell they were in the living room. It was quite obvious what was going on at this point by the sounds. There was no way for me to look in the living room without them seeing me. I pulled out my phone and opened my camera app. I put my phone just around the corner of the wall, just like that. This part was... Hard to write. I could see my wife with a man I didn't recognize. I won't go into detail on what would they, they were doing, but I think you can figure it out by yourselves. I started recording it. I was thinking that I needed a record of it for whatever I decided to do in the future. I just stood there in my kitchen, watching this all unfold on my phone screen. I felt like I could just scream at that moment, but for some reason I just froze completely. This went on for several minutes. She finally jumped off of him and made a comment about going to the bad room and they went upstairs. She even made a comment about how much time they had left. I walked into the living room and found this guy's pants. I took his wallet out and took pictures of his driver's license. I know his name and his address now. I've met, I'd never met him before. I have no idea how my wife knows him. I left the house the same way I entered. I went back to my car and cried like a pathetic man I am. I decided to watch the video to make sure I re it, it was recorded. I watched it all. I'll spare the details, but I sat in my car for at least half an hour. I couldn't drive for my parents and get the kids as I would have to explain why. I decided that I would pull in the driveway, open the garage, and just pretend like I was there to surprise her. I took my time getting to their house. I made a lot of noise. When I saw her, she was very flustered, asking me why I was home, etc. She was in a robe and said that she was just getting ready for a bath. I told her about my plans and she seemed excited. She poured us both a glass of wine and said we would program before getting ready. I don't think I talked too much, really. She took me into the living room. I'm not proud of what I let happen. I could feel... Finally see the guy sneaking downwards and going to the basement stairs, but I didn't say or do anything. I just let my wife continue doing what she was doing to me. Since that day, I have watched the video of her repeatedly. I can't bring myself to make any decisions of what I should do next. She seems to know something is wrong with me because she a she's asked a few times if I'm okay. I feel worthless and Every time I hit a low point, I watch that video again. I feel like I've watched it at least 10 times a day since I caught him. I stopped watching the videos after reading all the comments on my first post. It has helped 
clear my mind and allowed me to focus on the next steps. This has allowed me to be mostly back to my normal self for both my kids and my job. I have gone through my wife's phone and found nothing. I searched the guy's name from the driver's license. I figured out how they met. He's a landscaper. She was calling some a few months ago to clean up our yard and ended up getting some mulch and cleanup done. I've driven past his house many times. I think he's single as I couldn't find any records of other people living in that address. I've only seen a truck parked on the driveway when I have driven by. I have been avoiding my wife after the kids are in bed to try to limit one one time. I don't want any awkward conversation and I don't know. I don't want to have sex. I have been mostly successful with this but did slip up one night when I had a little too much to drink. I hated myself for it the next day. I don't believe she has seen him since the day I caught him. I've been paying attention any time she's gone. I obviously can track her 100%. I'm guessing any app I would put on her phone may be discovered. I have installed the doorbell camera on our house, though, so I can see, always see, what's in the street. When I did this, my wife didn't say anything. We continue to do things as a family as we normally would. I have done my best to not let her know what, what I know and to continue to be a good dad to my kids. The weird thing I'm dealing with now is that she's planned a night out with a friend for drinks. It's a friend from work, so I don't know her at all, and I'm not connected with this person on social media. When she told me I made up some excuse about work and said I couldn't watch the kids, she ended up getting our neighbor to agree to babysit. Now I'm... Debating if I should follow her to really see if she's meeting her friend or the guy. It seems like I'm heading towards a confrontation either way when I just want everything to go back to normal. I'm going to leave my house soon and pretend to be going to work. I'll probably just go to a bar to kill time until I can drive by the place she's supposed to be going to. I'm filled with fucking dread about all of this. Okay, so... I drove to a nearby bar and parked the car, trying to decide what to do next. The feeling of dread wouldn't leave me, and the idea of following her consumed me. I, I ordered a beer and sat in a dark corner, of observing the people around me without really seeing them. My mind was in a turmoil. I needed to talk to someone, but I didn't know where to start. But finally, I decided to call my best friend, Carlos. He had always been the guy I trusted for advice, even in the most complicated situations. I called him and asked him to meet me at the bar. Carlos arrived in half an hour, looking worried when he saw my expression. I told him everything, from the night I called my wife to my plan to follow her at night. He listened in silence, occasionally shaking his head and sighing. You need to confront her, man. You can't keep going like this, he finally said. This is destroying you, dude. I knew he was right, but the idea of confronting her filled me with dread. What would I say? What if she lied? What if she confessed everything? After a few beers and a lot of talking, I decided I would follow her. I needed answers. I needed to know the truth, even if it destroyed me. We left the bar and I drove to the place where she said she would meet her friend. I parked in a discreet spot and waited. My heart was racing and my hands were sweating. Time seemed to pass slowly as I waited. Finally, I saw her familiar figure leaving the building. She wasn't alone. My heart sank when I recognized the man with her, the landscaper. They were laughing and talking, clearly comfortable with each other. I followed them as they walked to a nearby bar. They went in and sat at a table in the back. I entered discreetly and found a spot where I could watch them without being seen. They seemed intimate, but not overly romantic. I... I watched as they talked and laughed, and a silent rage started to build inside of me. After an hour, they got up and left. I followed them in a nearby hotel. My mind was a whirl of thoughts as I watched them enter the lobby and walk in the elevator. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. My wife, the woman I loved, was blatantly cheating on me. I felt a mix of anger and sadness wash over me. I knew I couldn't continue like this. I needed to do something. But what? I drove back home and sat in the living room, trying to process everything I had seen. Time passed slowly until I heard the front door open. She walked in, looking surprised to see me awake. You're still up? Yeah. I replied, trying to stay calm. Look, we need to talk. 
She looked nervous, but nodded and sat in the couch. I took a deep breath and started to tell her everything I knew. I told her about the video, about following her that night, about the hotel. Man, she started crying, saying that she was sorry, that it had been a mistake. I wanted to believe her. I wanted this to be a nightmare I could wake up from, but reality was harsh, dude. I decided I needed time to think. I told her I would spend a few days at my parents' house. She tried to argue, but I was determined. I needed distance to clear my mind. The next day, I packed my things and drove to my parents' house. I explained the situation to them, were shocked and offered all their support. During the following days, I thought a lot about what to do. I talked to Carlos and other friends, close friends, trying to find clarity. Everyone had different opinions, but most agree that I needed to confront her definitely and decide the future of our relationship. <sighs> Finally, I decided to go back home and have a final conversation with her. We needed to settle this once and for all. When I got home, she was waiting, looking anxious. We need to talk, I said, sitting on the couch. She sat beside me, looking quite nervous. I know I messed up. She began tears streaming down her face. But I love you and I want to fix this. Well, I watched her for a moment trying to decide if I could just trust her again. Look, this isn't something that can be easily fixed, I replied. Trust has been broken, you know? She nodded, whipping away her tears. I know. I'm willing to do anything to regain your trust. We decided we would try couple therapy. I knew it would be a long and difficult road, but I, ne I needed it to give a chance. I loved my wife, and as much as this hurts me, I wanted to try to save our marriage. The following weeks were hard. We started going to therapy where, where we talked about our feelings and tried to understand what led to the affair. It was painful to relive those memories, those moments, but slowly I began to see a glimmer of hope. My wife was truly remorseful and did everything she could to regain my trust. Slowly, I began to believe that maybe we could get through this. I didn't know if our marriage would be the same as before, but I was willing to try. Gradually, I started to stop watching the video. I didn't need it anymore to remind me of what happened. I was focused on the future and trying to rebuild our relationship. It was a slow and painful process, but I knew that if we continued to work on it, we could find a path to healing. The future was still uncertain, but at least now we had a chance, and for now that was enough to keep trying. Returning home after spending a few days at my parents' house was a difficult decision. I knew our relationship would never be the same, but part of me still had hope. Even so, as I drove back, a sense of uncertainty overwhelmed me. Did I do the right thing by coming back home? Could I really trust her again? When I arrived home, my wife was waiting in the living room. She looked nervous, but also relieved to see me. She came over and hugged me, whispering that she was sorry and willing to do whatever it took to fix things. I wanted to believe her. I wanted to... so much for everything to go back to normal, but the image of that video and that night continued to haunt my mind. The first few days back were strange. There was a tension in the air, something that had never been there before. My wife tried everything to please me, to make me comfortable. She cooked my favorite meals, gave me space when I needed it, and tried to start conversations about the future. However, I was still in doubt. Every time I looked at her, I couldn't get the scene. I had seen out of my head. I went back to work, but my mind couldn't focus. Every time I was alone and my thoughts returned to that video, our couple's therapy sessions helped a little, but that allowed us to talk about the feelings in a controlled environment. Our therapist, Dr. Almeida, was kind, kind but firm. She challenged us to confront our fears and insecurities. In one of the sessions, Dr. Almeida asked us to, to talk about how we felt when thinking about the affair. I described the pain and anger I felt while my wife talked about her guilt and regret. It was painful, but also somewhat liberating. Yet the feeling of doubt persisted. I still wondered if I was doing the right thing. After therapy, we would go home and try to act normal, but the nights were the worst. Lying next to her in bed, I would toss and turn, unable to sleep. 
the images of this video and the scene I witnessed would come back to my mind. I would get up and go to the living room, sitting in silence, trying to process everything. One night, while I was in the living room, my wife appeared and sat next to me. She held my hand and said she was willing to do anything to regain my trust again. I looked at her and saw the sincerity in her eyes. Maybe there was a chance, I thought. Maybe, with time, I could learn to trust her again. I decided I needed some time alone to reflect. I asked her to take care of the kids and went to a friend's house for a few days. During that time, I thought a lot about our relationship, about what I wanted for the future. I talked to Carlos again, who told me that only I could decide what was best for me. When I came back home, I felt a little clearer about my feelings. I told my wife I was willing to try, but that we needed to be honest with each other. She agreed and promised to be transparent from now on. The weeks passed and we continued our routine of therapy, work, and taking care of the kids. There were moments of progress, moments where we felt we were reconnecting. But there were also moments of doubt, where I wonder if we could really get through this. One day, while we were in therapy, Dr. Almeida asked us to write letters to each other, expressing our feelings and hopes for the future. I wrote about the pain, but also about my desire to rebuild our relationship. When my wife read her letter, she talked about her regret and her hope that we could overcome this together. These letters helped us see that, despite everything, there was still love between us. We decided to focus on small victories and moments of reconnection. We started going out together again, doing things we enjoyed before all this happened. Slowly, we began to rebuild our intimacy and trust. There were still moments of doubt, of course, but sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night sweating, remembering the scene I had seen. But over time, these memories began to become less frequent. I started to realize that although I would never completely forget what happened, I, I could learn to live with it. One night after putting the kids to bed, my wife and I were sitting on the living room talking about our plans for the future. She held my hand and said she knew it would be a difficult path, but she was willing to walk it by my side. I looked at her, and for the first time in a long time I felt a small hope that we could really get through this. We started planning a small family trip, something to give us a fresh start. We knew it would be a long and arduous process, but we were committed to making it work. The decision to come back home, although difficult, turned out to be the right one for me. It was an uncertain path full of challenges, but at least, and sometimes, trying is the best we can do. I know we still have a long way to go, but every little victory gives us hope. I hope that one day we can look back and see this as a turning point in our relationship, a moment when we chose to fight for our love. As I continue to navigate these complicated feelings, I try to focus on the present and the future. I know there will be hard days, but I also know we, were, we are making progress. And for now, this is enough to keep trying. And we've reached the end of today's story. So, what did you think of this whole story? If you made it this far, don't forget to support the curious one by clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel. Until the next story, goodbye.